Oh, the little ghosties look different. <clears throat> Why are the little ghosties purple? <laughs> yeah, beat her up. <laughs> Why are we attacking her? Get wrecked. You silly little duckling. So yeah, minions are pretty good against Lilith, I'd say. All right. Well, I didn't intend to just immediately one tap Lilith in two different phases and then automatically just beat all of her unskippable phases. Now, about five hours into the PTR starting on a literal pure minions build, us not doing any damage. But here we are. So I figured I'd share this with people just in case you haven't come across it yet. If you're looking for something to try out, I think that this is like really hitting the nail on the head. My gear is pretty trash. I think I've gotten lucky with a couple different rolls and I'll try to give you a best idea of what to look out for. I think I've just tempered random stats on every piece of my gear and I've only masterworked a single piece of gear and uh, I hit like three okay crits on it, but let's go ahead and jump into it. So the concept for this build is to be even more pure minions than the pure minions build that I posted yesterday because I got a little bit of flack for that build using corpse explosion and that not being pure minions, which is very interesting considering I'm typically the one arguing about what is and is not pure minions, but I'm glad that it's proliferated throughout the rest of the community. So let's go ahead and look at how little damage we are adding to the fray and instead how much damage our minions are doing and just to give you a very quick idea i've seen my golem crit for about or sorry i've seen my golem do white damage for about four million damage which is like pretty good considering it wasn't even a crit it wasn't an overpower or anything well they can't overpower but just to give you an idea of like where the damage scale is looking right now using acolytes reap just to be able to generate corpses for us we're using supernatural blight we're only having a single rank into blight just to give them another damage multiplier and then we're also using bone prison with plunging darkness and void to use this as just like a much more efficient corpse tendrils which is pretty rad Obviously, a huge flesh be able to generate more corpses. We are casting Army of the Dead, and while we don't really scale its damage, being able to trigger as many corpses from it as possible gives us a lot of tools at our disposal for maintaining our corpse consumption package, as well as keeping all of our skeletons alive for as long as possible. Maxing out spiked armor, mostly for the percentage armor, since adding the percentage armor here is like a total armor roll, and since total armor can only be tempered and I think only found on an amulet, it's a lot harder to find this stat. We're obviously maxing out Skeleton Warrior Mastery, and you'll notice that I have plus six ranks to it because they just put Skeletal Warrior Mastery, Skeletal Mage Mastery, and Golem Mastery on basically every single piece of gear. It's actually kind of nutty. Like I said, we are using Bone Prison to reduce our cooldowns. This helps with Army of the Dead as well. But on top of that, since again, we're using Blight with Plunging Darkness aspect, it means that when we cast Bone Prison, it casts Blight. And then with the Void aspect, casting the Bone Prison pulls everything into it. it applies eight seconds of Vulnerable, which is really valuable considering we're using an iron golem for damage so we can't rely on our golem to be able to apply vulnerable for us three points in a fuel by death for the damage multiplier here we're putting three points since i have two dump points available into decrepify the damage reduction from decrepify is so much more valuable in a world where it's harder to get damage reduction on your stats in general abhorrent to crepify for the cooldown i did test it and luckily abhorrent to crepify is continuing to be triggered by minions attacks which it shouldn't be because that is a bug or at least right now they haven't changed that. Obviously full into amp damage, full into death's embrace, mostly for the DR, and then death's approach for mobility here. Three points into necrotic carapace. Since Army of the Dead drops corpses, we're able to fortify off of that, and it gives us a little bit more survivability, which is, again, just really hard to get your hands on. Army of the Dead, Supreme Army of the Dead, maxing out Golem Mastery. I have three additional ranks here, no additional ranks to Skeletal Mage Mastery right now and then Inspiring Leader, Hellbent Commander, and then Death's Defense. I was playing around with Bonded in Essence, and I was also playing around with the Bloodgetters aspect, which luckily does empower you, which further empowers your minions, but also does heal you. And I do think that if I had Temerity, I would be using that as a heal source to be able to generate barrier. I just don't have Temerity right now. But then obviously we're using Kalan's Edict since we are fully in on the minions here. I'm gonna more so talk about important stats that I can show you because again, I don't know what stats are going to be ideal in the end game. Right now, I'm clearing tier 65 pit, 
which means that the monsters are level 164, so 10 levels higher than a Nightmare Dungeon 100 was in Season 3. For the helmet, uh, being able to temper on Decrepify size, I've been making this joke about Big Curse all day. This is how far my curse hits. It's absolutely insane. You can also get Corpse Tendrils radius increase to make it so that Corpse Tendrils basically pulls from the same radius as this, but the biggest benefit of increasing these radii is the fact that on controller, I no longer feel like a second class citizen. Quite literally, I could curse right here and hit the entire screen, which just means that like the vast majority of my application of area of effect skills is significantly stronger than it was previously. Because remember, I have Carpal Tunnel, I play on controller and being able to target with curses was kind of a problem before. I'm using Juggernaut for the armor. We're sitting at 16,000 armor. I don't know how long this is going to keep me over armor cap. I probably need somewhere around like 20, 25,000 armor. I haven't done the math, but at least for right now, I still think that I'm physical damage capped in the pit. For our actual armor, the corpse tendril size is now completely useless here. This is where I'm putting hardened bones, and I only have a mineral of this aspect. I've been salvaging every single thing I've found over the past six hours. I haven't found a better hardened bones, but getting this all the way up to 25 DR would go a super long way for me to be able to feel good and have a significant survivability boost over what we currently do. You'll see that this is my only masterwork piece of gear. You can tell because it has the stars on it. So I crit on attack speed, skeletal warrior mastery and decrepify size. So this is giving my minions a huge amount of attack speed. I'm pretty sure I'm at the attack speed cap, meaning I'm getting the biggest bonus out of the cult leader paragon node that you possibly can. Here is where I'm putting Hulking. Hulking is surprisingly good nowadays because it turns out being able to spam your golem as fast as possible now that Decrepify no longer reduces cooldown off of Thorns procs is going a long way to make sure that I'm basically perpetually able to use my golem. And since golem is our only way of gaining unstoppable, it's actually really tricky not overusing it and then screwing yourself in certain circumstances. So unironically here, I think Hulking is a little bit goaded at this point, and while I don't have any unique items, it's very easy to fit it onto the build, and I'm wondering when I would cut it, and it might come down to once I have enough cooldown reduction on the rest of my gear, where I wouldn't feel like I necessarily needed it. For the pants, I would like to get more Golem Mastery here if I possibly could. Total armor for the temper roll is really nice, and then again, I have Corpse Tendril size on here because I was using Corpse Tendrils, so I could have a completely different roll here. I could have like cooldown, or I could have even more radius on my curse, although it's getting to the point where I don't think I need any more. Here's where I'm putting Might since we are using Reap. This is a huge amount of damage reduction, not only from the base skill itself, but from the Might aspect. And since they actually buff this to last for seven seconds, I feel like you have a lot of overlapping damage reduction, at the very least until we get into the end game where we have stronger gear where we may not need this. Uh, but on the pure minion, again, not using any spenders, etc., we can still fit Reap onto our kit. So this is just like an auto include as far as I'm concerned. For the boots, because you are able to temper on movement speed, not only onto your boots, but also onto your amulet, I'm starting to feel like there's a very easy breakpoint where you don't need a mobility aspect on your gear. And then we can go back to using our boots for a utility aspect. Here's where I'm putting Void, again, so that whenever I cast Bone Prison, it's going to cast Blight. Blight will pull everything in, giving me the damage modifier as well as that vulnerable proc. If you didn't want to use Void or Bone Prison, you could be using Blood Getters here, again, to gain the heal over time whenever you use uh, Raise Skeleton, which is actually like a pretty decent amount of survivability. And again, once I could like match that up with Temerity, I think it might be also a pretty goaded, at least in the early game progression, way of maintaining your survivability. This is a terrible amulet. Uh, it's got movement speed, max life, movement speed, and some additive damage. I would much rather ranks to like Hellbent Commander here. I would love ranks to the Golem Mastery if I could get that. I would also just like cooldown reduction, just generally any stats that are actually good for my build. It had movement speed and I went, you know what? Sure, good enough. This is where we're putting a cult to get the 50% bonus. So you'll notice that we have a metric ton of skeletons since this is getting us plus six of them in total. For the ring, the rings also have a bunch of wild stats. I would like crit chance, I would like attack speed, I would like lucky hit chance. Um, for tempering things onto them, cooldown reduction would be great, and then just additional damage, obviously. There's also a ton of really cool resource aspects that we do not personally need, but tempering on some of these resource aspects look like they're gonna completely like translate builds into a whole new tier without having to use like resource aspects and stuff like that. I'm really excited to try out other builds, but here's where we're putting Unyielding Commander, Big amount of damage bonus whenever we use Army of the Dead, which also helps our Golem. Just like crazy amounts of damage output whenever you click that button, as you saw at the beginning of that Lilith fight. 
But the other ring here, again, like you can have crit chance, you can have attack speed, um, you can have lucky hit chance. I got ultimate cooldown here, which I think is decent enough for Army of the Dead, and then also just flat damage. This is where I'm putting reanimation since none of my minions are going to be offing themselves. I'm not using bone mages, so it's just a really good damage multiplier here. Then lastly, on the offhand, not only does it just come along with cooldown reduction, but then I also rolled cooldown reduction on it. I don't really need the lucky hit chance roll, but I ultimately want to be able to use this for a shadow build. You notice that I tempered on lucky hit chance to be able to deal a huge amount of shadow damage, and I'm just like wildly excited to toss that onto an Infinimus build. At least for right now though, this is where we're putting Frenzy Dead to make sure that our minions are actually hitting that attack speed cap. Remember, you only need to reach 100 between your stats and their stats to get the maximum benefit out of Cult Leader. Anything else is just completely useless. The actual minions themselves, I'm going with an interesting combination of them. Originally, I was using skirmishers with crit, and I just think that, at least for right now, the skeletal warrior damage doesn't scale very well just because I'm not critting a lot. We can only really crit from Army of the Dead, and I just realized that doesn't have like enough uptime to make it so that they're continuously getting this multiplier. So I went over to Defenders and their ability to taunt. I was running into some survivability issues just as we're all kind of acclimating to how hard is a monster if it's higher level than a Nightmare Dungeon 100. So the taunt here is really nice. It also helps with staggering bosses at a very fast rate. You may want to be able to use Reapers with cooldown reduction just to have better uptime on Army of the Dead. And I think basically you can swap your uh, warriors themselves over to pure utility and then just worry about doing damage with your mages and your golem, be able to refocus and get a much more optimized output. And in that case, I think that Reapers would do a good job there. For the golems, you have a couple different options. I'm going with Iron Golem, does their slam attack every two attacks and does bonus damage when it slams. And that's how you're seeing me output crazy damage against single targets here. For the Paragon board, I am gonna update the planner that I have in my previous video. It's gonna be in my build links. This will happen sometime around tomorrow morning once I get back from my day job. But again, we're going for maximum damage, for our minions, we're not doing any damage. We're not scaling our damage at all. First, we're gonna go with the Amplify Glyph in the starter board, huge additional multiplier here. Then building up into the Cult Leader, I'm maxing out Infused Caster. I'm picking up most of the stats from Puppeteer. The fact that they now get 100% of my attack speed means that Puppeteer just needs to do something different. Only your minions gaining 10% attack speed from three Paragon nodes is literally garbage. It does absolutely nothing. Once you hit level 100, you have more than enough attack speed to be able to max this out. This needs to be something else. But I'm also even building over into Infused Warrior, even though I don't think that they're necessarily doing a ton of damage. I didn't want to give up on their scaling. Obviously picking up the Legendary Node, and then here is where we're putting Dead Razor. We are picking up all of the nodes that would benefit from it from Custody as well from Overlord. Over into the Flesh Eater board, we're using the recently buffed Control. This is absolutely disgusting. Yes, your minions gain damage to crowd-controlled enemies. They seemingly don't gain damage from, like, two slowed targets, two stunned targets, etc. I'd have to retest now, but that's at least the findings from before Season 4 PTR went forward. We're obviously picking up the targeted node, and then we're picking up Erudite to be able to max out our res. I think at this point we don't need that anymore, but I did need it when I first built out the Paragon boards, and I haven't re-optimized at this point, which is like the scariest part about this build. I've done effectively nothing to optimize it other than to slightly increase the quality of my gear and not really think about much else. Building over into Hulking Monstrosity, this is where we're going to put Skeletal Mages. We're only hitting a minimum investment here to be able to build out to them. You need that all res for them to feel very tanky. And then lastly, oh, I'm sorry, we actually have two more. Building over into Scent of Death, picking up the Ruin node, you would be able to hit this dex. And in fact, I thought I was hitting this dex. Oh, that's wild. I put dex gems into my gear to be able to hit this. Maybe I swapped a piece of gear, I'll have to go check that later. This is where we're putting golems so that we can gain the maximum investment to willpower for their damage bonuses. And then lastly, building over into Bloodbath, I have a minimum investment for Essence. If I could put more points into this, I would, but I don't think that I'm 100% chance to crit yet with my minions. So at least getting the crit multiplier whenever monsters drop below healthy is definitely good enough. And then once I reach 100% chance to crit, I would love to put the points in here because that is... 20 total additive damage at 100% uptime for every single node that we pick up, and it's really hard to beat that across any of the other glyphs. So here's where I kind of want to bring us a little bit closer to reality, because I think a lot of people are going to be putting out build guides that are showing minions doing like absolutely stunning work, and they are. Their single target damage is actually really, really good. I even feel like on the crap gear that I have, I'm able to move and position and use my cooldowns. I'm definitely having to play a little bit slower the further that I push into the pit, but I think that as I get better stats, better DR sources, and ultimately some of the unique items that I would like to be using, 
that I will be able to transition into higher tier pits more conveniently or more easily without dying. But what are some of the problems? Or at least, what are some of the things that they made good on and what I would continue to like to see? So you may notice that all of my minions are actually like so far away from me that they're like standing in front here. It's actually super great. The warriors attempt to run in front of you and initiate combat now. But then you'll notice that there are some interesting uh, organizational issues that happen depending on the terrain. I find that continuously if I change direction too quickly or if I hit a corner or if I'm standing behind a door or a barricade, the minions can't quite figure out how to be in front of me and often aren't engaging enemies even though the rest of them are currently fighting or I've cursed them or I've used my golem activation. Sometimes they're still just standing around doing absolutely nothing. The mages are sometimes just kind of shooting at nothing, and I don't feel like they're doing a good enough job of reorienting themselves to be able to target high priority monsters. We still can't target monsters. We can initiate combat, but like I just said, they don't always run into combat. Um, and then like things that are kind of, you know, issues, right? They don't all necessarily try to run in and deal with the suppressor field if they come across one. They can just stand outside of it doing nothing. Likewise, if there's ever a damage reduction or a monster, they're not targeting that. So they may be dumping a ton of damage into monsters that effectively can't die, and you're just waiting for AoE damage to handle the issue for you so that they can then go back to fighting monsters that will actually take damage. So I don't think that minions are just like, perfect now. And in fact, I think right now is the most important time for us to continue to critique what minions feel like, what the gameplay experience is. So I'm going to continue to be writing up this feedback. I'll have a huge document at the end of the PTR. Again, I'm only about six hours on this build. I'm not trying to pretend like I have all of the answers, but they are performing significantly better than before. They actually do single target damage. I feel like I'm actually scaling their damage and they're impactful in battle. But there's definitely still some issues. Uh, so before everybody goes like goo goo gaga, like fully enamored over the moon in love with them, I think let's keep that critical eye. Let's make sure that we try to play them in as many different ways as possible and find ways that they could be better so we can get that feedback into the hands of the developers so that they know A, that we appreciate the work that they've done thus far, but B, that they know that there's still work to do. So if you've been playing minion builds, I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't joined me down in the Discord, the link is in the description to this video. That's where I also have all my build planners that I'm keeping up to date. So if you wanted to follow my builds, check them out there. I'm also gonna be streaming every day on Twitch and on YouTube, so you can watch me on whatever platform you prefer. I generally get home around like, 11.30 to noon on the eastern border. I'm in Boston. Um, so whatever time frame that is to you, if you're over in Europe, that'll be about 6 p.m. your time. That's when I'm generally going live. So if you'd like to come hang out with me, I'd appreciate having you there as well. If you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing if you like this amount of information or if you're excited to keep up with the PTR news as we continue to develop better understandings of each one of these builds. And if you appreciated the video, go ahead and toss a like on it. It would mean the world to me. Uh, YouTube is finally recognizing that like, hey, I make content. I forgot that for a little while. So the more hands that we can get this into, the more nerds who are going to be able to enjoy the PTR. And again, get that critical feedback into the hands of the developers. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helps and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.